let me share screen. Already, are we recording? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for coming to Cluster API Provider Azure Office Hours. We do this every week on Thursday. It is March 14th today. Um, as you, I'm sure you know, Cluster API and CAPZ are sub-projects of SIG Cluster Lifecycle, which is a Kubernetes umbrella project, and therefore we abide by the Kubernetes community rules of conduct, which in this case basically boils down to try not to talk over each other, try to use the raise hand feature, and everybody just try and be welcoming. Um, <clears throat> if anybody's here for the first time and wants to identify themselves and say hello, this is a great time to do that. Um, I'll be quiet for 30 seconds and just feel free to unmute yourself. Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Radek Mayak from Red Hat uh, Team Cluster Infrastructure. And yeah, uh, our team mostly works on, uh, is going to work on Copy and works on Copy and the cloud. Infrast uh, cloud providers mostly that's relevant and some auto scaler work. Yeah, that's me. Great. Thanks for coming. Good to see you. Anybody else? Nope. Um, and if you want to add your name to the attendees list here, uh, please do so. Otherwise, let's get into our. Uh, open discussion agenda. First thing is we had a minor release last week. We have, um, we kind of changed our normal two month release cadence to allow ourselves to release more often if it's justified. And in this case, it was definitely justified uh, because there's quite a few features in here, at least relative to our normal release, most of which are in support of having better experience with managed clusters on AKS. Um, so we don't need to get too into detail. You can read the release notes, but uh, it's a big release. Pretty happy about it. Uh, any questions about that? All right. And then uh, Radek, you had a question about could we support machines without the Azure agent running, which re reminds me about a long conversation a long time ago, which is probably this. Yeah, and it's, it's yeah. still relevant, but uh, basically we are uh, moving from machine API, which is for cluster API uh, that was for three years ago or four years ago, and we are now migrating back to cluster API. Uh, so expect more contributions from our side. Uh, and what's blocking us is we don't. Uh, ship with uh, the Azure again and real Coreos. We only use something called Afterburn that does the initial checking and reporting back to Azure that we booted up. So what I want uh, to propose is some way of uh, allowing this requirement of on the Azure agent to be present to be disabled. Either like uh, I found there are some fields uh, in the machine specification of Azure that are provision of agent false and allow extension operations false. And if we could expose those in the cluster API, and then not run uh, the bootstrapping extension because yeah we, we cannot run it. Uh, we I tried uh, like making some kind of mock of the uh, extension that would report back, but the uh, VM extension API is too difficult to, to simply do. So for now, we don't really have plan on how how to report the boot uh, the bootstrap uh, 
but we we really need to get 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 it to work for now. I I looked at the other providers and so far like Azure I, I think is the only thing that's implemented this uh bootstrap check in um yeah it's really difficult to do with like without uh, having uh, access to running uh, arbitrary code on the on my, the machine we create so yeah this is what I want to implement like some kind of note I, I don't know if people have thoughts on what's the preferred way uh, the original PR was just uh, disabled adding disable bootstrapping extensions I don't think that's I would ra rather uh, use the provision VM agent options that are in Azure so what I thought what do you think about this? Um, on the face of it, I would say it sounds like a reasonable request. On the other hand, I know that that thread uh, that's pretty old there went on for a long time and there was a lot of pushback. Um, <clears throat> I guess I don't, I don't really know the details. I thought that, uh, I mean, the VM extension relies on the agent as well, right? So is that what's blocking the nodes? So so wouldn't you need to sort of disable them both to accomplish this? Or is that what yes. you're proposing? Yeah. Um, the VM extension requires the agent. We don't ship the agent, so we cannot run the VM extension, so it doesn't work. Right. And I think, I think the concern back then was uh, it might be possible to turn them both off, but then how do you know that then you have to have some other mechanism to know that the node is actually up and working. And also uh, it seems like a really big, seems like a great way to have users make broken clusters if they don't do things carefully. Um, but that's all that, I mean, that's all I can think of. Does anybody else have any comments about this general idea? Yeah, there, there is a risk, but currently Azure is the only platform that does this and it's working fine. So yeah. in the in the future, we, we can like propose some platform agnostic solution that will work. But for now, we just need to get it working. And if we cannot get this upstream, then we would have to like carry patch that disables it on our side. But uh, we would yeah. rather have something upstream. Well, I'm certainly not opposed to it, you know, starting a new PR to change this or whatever, but I'm just one of the maintainers. If anybody else has a different opinion, speak up. But I think in general, uh, it sounds a little risky, but uh, it seems like it's something you guys really need. So we'd definitely be willing to work with you on a, on the change. Yeah, if there are no other people want to speak about this, then I, I will make a marriage request sometime in a few weeks. And we can discuss that on the PR. Thanks. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, okay, if there's nothing else on that, Daniel, you want to talk about the sub ID PR? Yeah, I, you know, if, if this isn't the right time to, to, to dive into a PR, we don't need to, but I, I just thought it would be uh, interesting because it's, I, I, um, I made a kind of, I would say unorthodox proposal. Um, this is, this is a field that has always been, um, been optional, but immutable and in uh, actually before the 1.11 release, uh, when CAPC supported the bootstrap manager credential, you, you could create an Azure cluster resource with no subscription ID information and, and sort of rely on the, um, the controller to read that from the, the, this bootstrap credential. That went away 
in 111 and um so there's no there's no real reliable source uh uh for for a subscription id and and but existing azure clusters that don't have the subscription id field now uh you know can't can't be reconciled uh, so the proposal the original proposal was well, hey let's let's make this mutable and um that has some risks uh if you if you change the script subscription id that will actually have side effects uh, creating resources in in a different um i guess yeah in a different tenant maybe uh i, I yeah i don't know exactly how to the, the right words uh, to use uh, but uh there's there's risk for for users and so then there was uh i think there there were sort of the the you know different alternatives like make it mutable uh but you could only update it once uh versus just make it mutable and you can update it as many times as you'd like if, for example if it's if it's empty string then you can update it that's that's that that's not bad but if you make a mistake, what do you what do you do, right? And and making a mistake is is definitely um, within the realm of possibility. So, final proposal was, I think I added this a couple of days ago, was hey, can we can we make this conditionally mutable, where if you uh, add an annotation to the resource, then the field becomes mutable. And thus allowing you to uh, just sort of migrate, let's say this, this is your cluster resource and add the subscription ID information. And then you can also remove the annotation and so remove the risk of inadvertently uh, updating the field. Uh, unorthodox, I, I haven't seen that kind of, you know, approach before. Maybe somebody else has, maybe somebody's, yeah, that's, that's why I wanted to bring it up because it's just kind of, Idea. John? I'm still partial to the idea that I threw in that PR of bringing back the um, bootstrap credentials and only read the subscription ID from that, which is exactly how this was behaving before. Um, because the reason that we removed the bootstrap credentials was to get rid of the like tenant ID, client secret, client ID, those parameters from any global config because those need to be specified now in an Azure cluster identity. Um, but I don't think subscription ID, I mean, subscription ID you can't specify in an Azure cluster identity. And I don't know if we ever will allow that. So I'm thinking it would just be like the safest thing to do in the short term to bring back that global secret only for subscription ID, and then we don't have to change the webhooks or anything at all. Go ahead, yeah. Daniel. Daniel. Yeah, there's there's one associated issue, um, which is actually, I think, how I, uh, how I first sort of brought up the subject, and that is the subscription ID, although it is uh, nominally optional, for the Azure man for for Azure cluster and Azure managed control plane, if I create an Azure managed control plane resource, and I do not set subscription ID, and I rely on the controller uh, to sort of fall back to this alternate source, right, the environment variable, uh, this bootstrap credential, let's say, for the subscription ID, it does not do that. It will it will fail. Uh, it's it's a it's I mean I, I guess you could if if we consider that a bug and we fix that then we you know we'll make it possible uh, uh, to um, you know to have a subscription ID uh, be empty for Azure Managed Control Plane uh, but if you know if if we don't then we sort of, I, 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 it's, it's just kind of strange. We have this, you know, Azure cluster where we're, you know, reverting this change that we made. And now we're saying, you know what, if you didn't have subscription ID, just get it from the bootstrap credential. While on the other hand, Azure managed uh, 
control plane, that resource we we effectively have like never supported an empty subscription ID. Um, and as, as, I, as far as I know, you could have never created, uh, you know, an Azure managed control plane uh, with that field being empty. So I, I, I don't know. I, uh, yeah, I agree that that you know, s small small changes are safe, but there are, you know, it's all it's also there's also something to say for I mean, consi maybe consistent user experience. Good job. Yeah, I, I think making things consistent is where we would want to land in the long term for sure. Um, but yeah, I'm. I guess my point is that when we deleted the bootstrap credential, there was an oversight in the subscription ID piece that we just haven't addressed. And it's obviously now causing issues where people can't upgrade. So I think if we can at least get over that hurdle first, and then we can kind of make more calculated changes regarding the API and mutability, webhooks, all that stuff down the road. But I think if, if we just want to get people unblocked, for right now, I think just bring back the bootstrap credential only for subscription ID is the most sensible thing to do. That'd be the lowest risk and easiest to implement, I think. Any other comments? Is that Make sense to you, Daniel, or there's still uh, different. So, so we've actually um, we've actually worked around the issue by you know by modifying uh, the web hooks, uh, and that you know that I, so, so it's going to be you know it's it's sort of a one time change. We'll we'll move back to the the upstream web hook implementation. After that, so you, you know we're we're not we're not you know too concerned about um, uh, I guess the, you know risk uh, by by making the the field mutable or conditionally mutable. Uh, we we want to we we want to get subscription ID into into all the Azure cluster objects. Um, so yeah, I mean, I I, I think it it would be great if we had more maybe user reports. For now, I I guess I'm the only one really that has that has said anything about um you know this this blocking an upgrade. Um, but I yeah I I I do wonder if if you know going back to the to the bootstrap credentials is is really I don't know. I, I I think I think we wouldn't prefer it, but you know, again, we're we're only one um, uh, data point, I guess. Uh, sure. Does but so but it sounds like you have a workaround in place for right now, but you're trying to contribute something like that back upstream so that you're not forked from. But yeah. Well, I mean, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, John, but it, from our point of view, this is kind of like a regression that we let slip through, and we really want to, as engineers, we want to fix the regression first. Is kind of how you feel about it, and and that would, I think, what John was proposing would do that. Yeah, I, I think bringing back the bootstrap credential would at least get us back to some sort of steady state, and then from there, it would probably be easier to kind of formulate better ideas about exactly how we want this to look and how we want to get to that point. Because I think if we don't have the bootstrap credential, then we need to make a breaking change to the API, um, which obviously we need to think pretty carefully about or do the webhook things, but the webhook things are definitely non-trivial. And I don't know if there's like one obvious way to do those kinds of things. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking that bringing back the bootstrap credential is the easiest thing we can do right now that I think is probably not super controversial in terms of like, it'll definitely work. Um, yeah, I, I definitely agree that 
we can make this better in the long term. Do we have an issue out there saying we should uh, restore that behavior or is this something we should create? No, I think that I think that was kind of encapsulated within that PR. Okay. <clears throat> uh, maybe we should make it a separate issue just for the idea that that was a regression and we can fix it and then this can evolve in parallel. Um, any other questions or comments about that? What do you think, Daniel? Are we sort of on the same page? Yeah, no, I I I, I totally understand the um, the perspective. Sorry, I think I'm cutting in front of David. Um, but uh, I, I yeah, I, I understand the perspective from from you know for for Cap C. I I, I think that it, it it'll be it'll be a little bit of a shame because the work you know to get this. Uh, or to you know to revert these these changes that happened a few releases ago, uh, at least I don't think we will we will use it. And if there aren't others that have you know spoken up and said, hey, this is a problem for me, I'm I'm you know I'm I'm uh, it seems like it might be ashamed of, uh, you know, work for 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 little for little value for others. So I, I you know I also don't want to make um, busy work. Yeah. Yeah, I I think our assumption is also though that uh, you were just the helpful one, really, not the noisy one, and that probably there are other people in this situation because we don't always get feedback. Sorry, go ahead, David. Yeah, I was just I was just trying to hopefully summarize or come to a closure because I mean I'm just looking at the PR and there's a bunch of comments and then there's tests are passing, so I'm just wanting to make sure there's an immediate at least for. Daniel's PR, like if we're clear on direction with that one specifically, um, but maybe maybe I missed it in the conversation. But are we? Do we do we know kind of next steps there, Daniel? Um, for that PR to make subscription ID mutable. It, it sounds it sounds like I'll be calling you. <laughs> Sorry. Because I, I, it sounds like it's not, you know, not, yeah, no, nothing, nothing proposed in that PR is, uh, you know, seen as a, is, a, is the right step forward for Capsi. Yeah, John. Uh, I'm. I know Jack has taken a look at that too, and I would like to get Jack's feedback on that one more time before we make any ultimate decisions on that. Because I mean, I haven't taken a super close look at the PR, but. Um, like the bootstrap credential thing is just kind of the first thing I thought of um, when I kind of started understanding the issue there. Um, but yeah, I, I'd be happy to take a look at that PR and test it out. But um, so yeah, I guess next steps are I'll ping Jack to update him on this and I will review the PR. Yeah, I, I thought, or, oh, go ahead, David. Um, I mean, I was just going to comment, and I think Matt has kind of echoed the sentiment as well, but I, I just want to like maybe reiterate like that we do care about people having a good upgrade experience. We don't want to like break people. Um, and so, um, you know, it sounds like there's an idea of, like John was mentioning, to try and help like remediate that. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know if that's this PR or not, but I, I think that's just to reiterate, like, I don't, I don't want you to feel like, you know, you're, you're the only one or whatever. Like we, we do want to help people. I will say in the general sense of the term, we, we are trying to support N minus like two. Um, but at some point, you know, we do realize that the reality of like some people are a number of versions back and we, um, we did add upgrade tests to our end to end test suite, uh, whatever a release or two ago. <laughs> um, and so that's, yeah, just something we care about. So yeah, that's all. Cool, yeah. Um, all right, I think we have relative clarity on that. And yeah, I, I was just getting from that that uh, probably, I, I agree with John, we should try and, we should think about addressing the regression itself first. 
and then revisit this PR. It wasn't necessarily saying close it, but I haven't looked at it as closely as other people, so I will try and do that as well. Um, all right, do we want to move on? David, you want to talk about the AKS Helm chart? Yep, yeah, sure. Um, so do you want to just click on the, since you got the yeah. screen up, that's fine. I don't, I don't think we need, I, I put the links there so it should be easy to follow along. The, the cap Z Helm chart for AKS. Yes. I don't want to get, yes. get confused with terms here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, so this, uh, just to orient people on the general um, design um, of like what, are, what we're trying to solve with the Helm chart is to have a better experience, not only for the, the getting started, but also for uh, the actual uh, GitOps piece, you know? So once you start involving Argo or Flux, um, you know, it makes things way easier to have a Helm chart to stamp out clusters. And so I think there's a there's a big need for this. Uh, and there's there's actually now at this point, um, someone who has, uh, you know, brought up a sample chart to try and help make that easier. And I'm hitting, we're hitting, I, I played with this yesterday with, um, with Jonathan and we're kind of hitting some challenges with the design. And so I just wanted to talk those things out um, with the group here to just get some feedback. Uh, so in particular, the, uh, if you click on um, maybe each, all, all three of those in order, I can explain the situation. Um, Cause we want this Helm chart obviously to be publicly hosted by Cap Z so that anyone can use it. And then for anybody to, you know, make a, an easy way for them to stamp out clusters. So this is the default values file that if you scroll down to this, uh, there's a bunch of settings, right? As you know, AKS has a ton of settings, right? And it's overwhelming for a lot of people. And so we want to set just like there's ter Terraform modules uh, that kind of have default settings. Um, we want to have kind of a, a good, you know, default setting so people don't have to necessarily think about a lot of these things. Um, but if you go to agent pools, right? We right now have, as you can see, you know, um, an agent pool zero um, is, is a, you know, array here of agent pools. You could put, you know, certain number of agent pools in there with default values, all right? So if you, you get that, now you go to the next link. Yeah, so go to the, the next link. Um, that references basically the current eight dollar sign agent pools dot scaling thing. Uh, you know, dot dollar, you know, yeah, it's the range of the agent pools and then it goes through that. Um, right now this, yeah, so that's that's what it's populating with the default values. And then you click on the next link. Uh, this is then what you want to override, right? So, you know, you want to ideally, because if you're stamping out 50, 100, or 500 clusters, right, you want you don't want to have to put in every single value. So ideally, you just put on very minimal overrides, right? Just like the name or something else in the node pools. Uh, and unfortunately, this does not work. It looks great. It looks awesome, right? Like I can just put these over here, but it actually does not populate the default values. So basically those values there you see with the ones in the default values from two clicks ago, those things do not merge together. Um, and it seems like this is a limitation of Helm and it might be just, I think Matt is nodding his head to what this thing is. And so so I think I think the question then is, because we absolutely need to have this this type of functionality working, right? We need to be able to have agent pools that are multiple because people may want two, three, four n number of agent pools and each agent pool should have some default value set for each agent pool. And then we need people to be able to override those things in specific values. And so like, that is what we need. <laughs> I'm, I'm at a loss as to how would we design the Helm chart um, to make this work? I, you know, um, because that's, that's pretty essential. We don't want people to have to, you know, put a hundred values in to, to execute to provision a new uh, AKS chart uh, or a new base cluster every time. Go ahead, John. You got your hand raised. Yeah. So if I'm understanding this correctly, Helm does document pretty much exactly this case. And I threw a link in chat. And I think what Helm would kind of expect you to do in this case is instead of having just an array like this, it would be a key value map where 
like the index would be something unique to each one, like the name. And then, so you can do like agent pool dot pool zero dot whatever equals something. Um, so you can override individual things that way. Um, does does that look like it addresses that problem? So I think if I understand right here, you would basically put um, like the, like you have the server zero. So like if we go back to the middle file where the, the node pools, uh, node pools is uh, the one that has the, it's the it. middle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that one. Yeah, so if, if you scroll to the top of that page, uh, yeah. So right now it's range and it's just agent pools. So if, if we did dollar sign agent pools and then in brackets like I or something, would that actually fix the technical problem, do you think? Like range um, I, because then that, because yeah, that, I mean that, if, if we could make something like that work, if that's, if that would do that, then yeah, that, I think that I would be awesome. I just, I'm not that knowledgeable about Helm to, to I guess, to make that work. I mean, you can range over like a key value map where like instead of getting a, an integer index, you'd get a string index, which would be something like the name. Um, so that sounds like it might work. Go ahead, Matt. Um, I, th I thought this boiled down to a general problem though, which is like, even once you've uh, addressed the list somehow, you still have a dictionary merge is essentially what you're trying to do, right? Yeah, you want like the default values there and then the yeah. ones that you specify to like combine, right? To then yeah. apply to each to each like agent pool that's there, right? Right. And I thought that on its own is problematic in Helm. Like essentially they closed the issue that says, you know, this should be smarter and it should do a dict merge. So I'm so I could definitely be wrong, but I'm not I'm not sure this is easily done in general. Um I can I can post okay. the link to the yeah, issue want, I'm thinking of where yeah. I, they've been shouting for years like Helm should do this and they got closed. Uh, yeah, if you could maybe, post that, that'd be that'd be cool to just that have works. that context because I think that if I mean, I, there's like we basically have to have a way to do a, this equivalent thing, right? I, I don't. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm open to however that looks, right? I I don't you know if John your suggestion works great. If Matt you're saying it's not possible, well I don't know, but like I. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not I, sure. I don't. I don't know, but we need we need basically an answer to this um, because it's it's pretty fundamental um, to the whole the whole thing having a good experience, right? Um, Maybe this isn't exactly the same thing. I don't know. Um, but, but John, what you're proposing would that require changes? That would require changes to the upstream chart as well. <laughs> Pardon me, yes. not just our value. Yeah, so we'd have to. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't. I, then that's a, that's totally fair. Whatever we got to do to fix the 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 problem at the root, that's that's great. I mean, we haven't, you know, Nelly hasn't PR'd this upstream, and I think this is obviously it's a deeper, more challenging technical problem to handle. That's why I'm bringing it up with the group to figure out that part. Um, you know, first because I think once we get that figured out, I think it's probably in a state where we could we could probably get it get everything happily moving along to to get the first version up there and in, in, in the CAPZ repo. But right now this is a deal breaker, right? Um, yeah. So yeah, so that's, I, I guess maybe next steps would be, I don't know, John or Matt, maybe pairing on it or something to just kind of get a feel of how to figure it out. Um, and then uh, I guess we could go from there. The next, the next thing, which is secondary to uh, that I, I think it's important to think about at least structurally is the cluster class. And because we want people to be able to provision AKS clusters with a cluster class or not with cluster class. Um, and so, you know, I think that's another question, like if we're already thinking about structure of the charts and iterating over things, like how might we best like design the chart so that people could pick? Um, and is that going to be something where, you know, my gut is we probably have to have a whole nother cluster class section and then some variable to light that up or not. But I, I don't know. I just throwing out the idea. Go ahead, John. So I guess for cluster class, I would try our best to structure that kind of like how the types are structured where 
um, like in the chart, if you have some helper template that specs out like the template stuff for a, like an Azure managed control plane, then if you just merge that with all the specific stuff that you can't do in a cluster, if you're not doing cluster class, but then if you are doing cluster class, you can still share that same piece of all the stuff you can put in a template. So, I mean, I think there definitely are ways where you can kind of define everything kind of in one place and then merge everything together and construct things based on whether or not you're using cluster class. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it'd be good to obviously be good to not, you know, to have the DRY, you know, so if we can have one place to define the managed control plane, one place to define the Azure pools, and then we have like a conditional wrapper or something for cluster class, that'd be ideal for sure. I don't, I just, if you think that's possible, that's good to know. At least um, it'd be a, you know, additional logic that we'd have to inject versus like, oh, we have to blow up the whole structure and redo everything or copy it all over again. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. All right. I don't have any other thoughts on that, but um, yeah. Anyone right. else or we can move on. Any other comments on Helm stuff? All right. Um, next thing is anybody going to KubeCon next week? I don't think anybody on our team is, unfortunately. Uh, nonetheless, I was going to propose we skip the meeting because we generally do KubeCon week and most of the other SIG groups do, unless people uh, uh, would rather not. But if nobody ejects, I'll, I will consider next week skipped. We will all still be around on Slack, and I, as far as I know, mo the maintainers will still be here, so please uh, bug us, but I guess we'll skip the meeting. All right, that's all we have on the agenda. Any other, any random ideas or anything? Do we want to go through a uh, bug and milestone review or should we skip that? I'm asking you, David Tessar, mostly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, um, I mean, it might, I think it would be good to just make sure that we have on the P like a PR sanity check that there's no, like just go through the, the PRs that there's none that are meeting review or updates might be good. Um, I think milestone. Um, I, I'd like, I'd like maybe in two weeks for us to cover that. Um, just, I think KubeCon and I did put some stuff into the roadmap, um, but I'd like to spend a little more time um, to then bring it up to the bigger group. Um, so yeah, so I think if we can just look at PRs, it'd be good. Sure. And there's, a there's actually, if you go to the PR, uh, well, you can do the, and the PR project, triage. the project, the, yeah, the PR triage thing. Cause that way that we can, we can easily see the status. This is yeah. kind of inside baseball stuff. So if uh, people want to drop, please feel free, but we'll, um, in progress. Oh, so we're gonna go to. Uh... Yeah, I think in progress. Usually, you can just leave, um, right? And just you don't have to review those. Just the needs review ones. We need to make sure, this, like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one here, the flat car container Linux. Uh, they just changed Fine. a couple of days ago to uh, non-draft and all that. So um. So it looks uh, like a needs review. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, okay. this this should be needs review. Okay. And do we have, do we want to have somebody trying to sign to that one to review it? I would be glad to look at it unless okay. somebody else is. That's how that cool. works? No, wait. Cool. We go. What field is that? Creator? No. Uh, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's all good. There. Okay. okay. Um, and then we already had, uh, yeah, we already have people on that one. Yeah, this the, is not ready. Go one to one is a, is a, so is someone progress. so someone else does someone else on our side need to review that? Like we could have someone else. Um, uh, I don't know. John has looked at it, and um, I think it was LGTM. So we need to have someone else review it. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, we've talked about these two. Yeah. Uh, this one is ready to go. I'm just not, it's kind of a old hard coded type change. And so I wasn't, I haven't weighed in on it yet, but it does need to be reviewed, but you know, let's not, re let's not visit it just in this context. I'll assign myself to actually review it. it who's review that from? It. Who's, who's is that one? Um, I'm not sure. Some, a community member. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, Christians. Yeah, you can just put whites, around. whites eleven. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is that, yours about. Yeah, that's mine. Yeah, and I, I, I tagged you and and uh, and Jack in that one. Um, I know you LGTM'd and not was LGTM'd, but I, I'm like, I know it's needs. I asked, had some specific questions there. Um, yeah. and and I already know that Jack has one one thing that he wants changed in that release process. So, I would like just you both to actually uh confirm what <laughs> what is and in, in out of scope for the release with that change um so that i can then make uh, ideally one only one more update and then we're and then hopefully we're done so Indeed. cool yep oh my um we still have cecile assigned to some stuff in here yeah um a couple. So these are all weight on author. These are, yeah, I think a lot of these are pretty old, um, but not all of them. Um, right. So I think this we have one. Yeah. Yeah. This one we can probably close, but I'll let Jack do that. Uh, yeah, and this one is weight on author for the question for him. I think that's, those are all up to date. Anything else you want to look at? All the PRs that actually show up show up here by default, right? Yeah, they, yeah, that. it does auto add. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's call it good for this week. And uh, once again, we're going to skip next week, so we'll see everybody on March twenty eighth. Thanks for coming. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.